Hi, everybody. Here we are, live, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully live. Um, gonna check, just make sure that I've gone live. So hard to tell. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but <laughs> we accidentally went live twice tonight while we were preparing, which is called Murphy's Law. Okay, yeah, I look like I'm going. All right. <clears throat> so yes, I was, uh, we were setting up the camera and my little, I want to say hookah lounge without the hookah uh, or my harem here tonight. And uh, we, I accidentally hit the button or my uh, husband hit the button when I was sitting here and then I was framing it again when he was sitting here, we hit the button. That is a perfect example of what can go wrong when you're making videos, but you live through it. So that's exactly what I wanted to talk about tonight, which is Murphy's Law. Um, anything can go wrong, will go wrong. It's kind of true. I mean, I'm sure that in your life, uh, you feel this way anyway on a daily basis. Oh, see, look, the, the cops, the alarms, this will, this will go on all night. Um, so you feel like this in your daily life. And in film, it's because everything is so condensed and you are on such a tight time frame to get something done, you've done all the prep, it's time to go, you feel like you've covered everything, and then something falls apart, right? And the question is, how do you deal with it? That's, that's what it comes down to. And it, it comes down to resourcefulness and what resources you actually draw on. So, for example, I have worked on a lot of films, commercials, stuff like that. So, one time, I went to Iraq. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. I went to Iraq during a war to make a movie. Okay, I, again, I have no idea why. So, except my husband said that it was safe. Hmm. So, I went on over there. And we were in northern Iraq, which was sort of the vacation area for any Iraqis that were actually in the middle of the war, right? So I, we were up in Kurdistan. And while I was there, I found out that someone always gets fired on this particular director's crew. Well, I kind of sense that I might be that person. So I was there for a good three weeks before things really started to fall apart. And uh, about middle of the third week, I was told that I was let go. Did I mention that I was in Iraq during a war? <laughs> so I was let go, um, which is a little different from being let go. I look like I'm frozen. Am I frozen? Hopefully you're hearing this. Maybe having issues, haha. <laughs> anyway, so I was let go, and I was told that I had to travel with the crew further south, south being more dangerous, uh, because you just didn't know when flights would leave from the nearest city, um, and they were often canceled, so they would, they would be scheduled every other week, and I had a chance of catching one, but if I didn't catch it, then it would be another two weeks. So here I was going to be tracing around Iraq and not being paid, and I said, huh, no. So my option was to be sent north over the Kurdistan border in a taxi. So <laughs> I, I called upon my resourcefulness. Um, actually, I just kind of said, heck no, I'm not going south. I'm getting the heck out of here, send me north. So um, I did have, I had made friends with the guards and such, and so I, I rode in a taxi up to the border of Kurdistan and Iraq through PKK territory, crossed the border on my own by foot. I think there were seven security checks. Got to the other side of the border. There was a taxi waiting for me there, like a yellow cab, like I was going out here in Brooklyn. Hey, can you take me to the nearest airport? So I get in that taxi, fall asleep in the bed. He tells me I should keep my head down. Okay, all right, fine. So I keep my head down, fall asleep, wake up. We're pulling into what looks like a, a little store. And he tells me to get out of the car and get into another taxi. So by now I have no communication with anybody I know. I'm now simply in a stranger's car, getting into another stranger's car. Well, you know, long story short, I got to Istanbul by plane after this, these very honest people dropped me off at the airport. 
What did I learn? Well, everything that can go wrong absolutely did go wrong. So I was fired in the middle of a war in Iraq. What did I do? I didn't panic. I didn't curl into a little ball. Um, I might have cried. I'm not sure. But the point is, I survived it and I came out stronger, right? I called upon my own passion, my own desire, of course, to be a way to move on. I mean, it actually made me even more impassioned to get back and get back to being an artist, get back to creating things and get out of this really crazy situation that I had been in. So that's one example of things going wrong and handling it, you know, also not, not creating a blame game, right? Yes, of course, I was not happy with what happened, but it's about not making everybody wrong, right? Not making the person that fired me be wrong, even though it was, you know, not my favorite thing to happen. Um, and, and learning, you know, why I was in the end. Um, so that's one thing, that's one instance of everything going wrong on a, on a film set. Another instance of trying to get something off the ground and then it doesn't happen is when I was trying to make my most recent short film, which was to take place in Boston because I had found this lovely actress who also plays the cello, which was mandatory because nothing's easy in my life. Of course, I cast teenagers, teenage musicians uh, in my film, a dozen of them. So we had to make this film in Boston. Well, if you'll remember last year, there were blizzards in Boston for months and months and months and months. Well, this project tried to happen even the year before, but because of scheduling, you know, you've got musicians who are, they're pretty much like professional level, these high school students. So they are, first of all, in high school, second of all, so they're minors, second of all, they're musicians with crazy schedules, and third of all, they're not all actors. So I had to work with, you know, kids that were musicians first and not actors at all and get them, helping them become comfortable uh, on camera. So we Skyped with a few of them. We got really close to making the film. Uh, I raised money on Indiegogo. Uh, we got really close to making the film and then schedules completely fell apart. The lead actress could not do it and I was going to have to recast her and I was in love and adamant about her being in the film. So I made a decision. I was very decisive that we were going to go ahead and push the shoot date to the next year when she had a break. Of course, it then was there was a blizzard at that time. So we couldn't film the first time. So the next time we scheduled it to happen, there it was the tail end of a blizzard and there was another one coming and I said, "You know what? We're going to go ahead and go for it." Because at that point I was kind of calling on the universe and I was saying, "Universe, am I supposed to make this movie? And I felt like the answer was yes, but I still wasn't sure. So I had, I flew in my cinematographer because I do hire them sometimes. That's how I learn the best stuff. I flew in a cinematographer from Los Angeles. I took the chance. I had some crew come from New York. I hired local people in Boston. We put it all together and that movie got made. It did not get made easily, let me tell you, because it did snow every night. We almost thought we were going to cancel every day, and we did not. Not just because of me, but because of the teamwork and the energy of everyone around me, right? I surrounded myself with the right people. I got really, really lucky, or maybe I'm, yeah, I'll take a little credit for it. I'm pretty good at picking the right people. But they also showed up, and they showed up big time. So they were resourceful. Uh, and I didn't give up because it was important. It was incredibly important. So if you're an entrepreneur, and I guess you are if you're here, or maybe you're just a friend of mine, um, if, if you're an entrepreneur and you need to get out there, you, want, you know you need to get out there, you know you need to build your clientele, you know you need to be able to show your skills, your genius, whatever it is you have, you can't do it anymore on the internet without video. Um, you really can't because this is the way, for example, today I went live this morning for a reason. I posted three times on my Facebook page today about this live broadcast. The first one was a quick live broadcast. You know how many people saw that video without me even boosting the ad, without boosting it? 250 organic reach. 
I posted two other times uh, pictures and updates of, hey, come check me out at 8 o'clock tonight. You know how many times those were seen? Four and one organic reach. That's the difference of what video does just as an example on Facebook and Facebook is absolutely huge because I you know Google Facebook YouTube whatever video is what is going to get eyes on you get people to trust you get people to know you and buy whatever it is you're selling you you know trust you trust you trust you hand you the credit card um, so so let me tell you one more story about what can go wrong though this is maybe a little different so I was working on a film with Al Pacino many many years ago and after films they have these great things called rap parties w-r-a-p not so we had a rap party and I was dancing with Al Pacino okay yes let me just remember this okay so I was dancing with Al Pacino but my boyfriend at the time was also at the party and he was a little jealous I guess because he interrupted the dance and wanted to take a picture of Al Pacino just in that moment but he wanted me to take a picture of him with Al so I didn't make him wrong well maybe I did a little bit so I I maybe made him wrong a little bit and I was like okay this is awkward because literally he stopped us in the middle took the picture the camera didn't work. This is back before the digital, the phones. I'm dating myself. Camera didn't work. I was like, ha ha, sorry, you know, da 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 da. Finally, get the picture made. And I hand it back to my boyfriend. And I go back to Al and we finish the dance because guess what? I was going to finish that damn dance. So that's something that can go wrong, did go wrong, and had a happy ending. Because really, things end up having happy endings. No matter what, when it gets if it's done it's done the way it was supposed to be done if you've done all the planning if you've really prepped what you're gonna do what you're gonna say you know like tonight I have a little outline eh, you know is it perfect no what's perfect anyway am I gonna get through it yeah I was a little nervous about tonight I don't know why sometimes I get nervous to get on camera but I just do it anyway because it's important for me to reach you so, I gotta have a sip of tea, hold on. If anyone wants to ask questions, certainly feel free. But I just want to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish with one other statement. And it, when I, was, I mentioned resources, and I do mean resources, but I also mean resourcefulness because I keep watching over and over this video clip of Tony Robbins. And he's talking about the fact that people are using a lack of resources as an excuse to not do things. I don't have the money, I don't have the time, I don't have the ability, I don't have the know-how. And the truth is that the greatest resources are within us, right? So decisiveness, creativity, passion, honesty, sincerity, love and if we use these ultimate human resources then all those other resources are right there for us to have so if you're using any any excuse for not making videos because it's a resource issue it's a money issue it's a time issue it's a whatever issue you've already got the answers right here with me right if so if you're using those excuses the game's off because they're just excuses, it's just a story and it's not true. I want you to win. I want you to win. I want you to be noticed on the freaking internet because, and it sounds so silly because the, it's the internet, it's small, it's the small little thing, it ha it's too small to even contain you. But it's what we have right now as the vehicle to be heard. So you gotta get out there with video until there are holograms, okay? So I'm going to wrap it up. I think I'm having internet issues, but that would just be perfect for the story <laughs> that we have here tonight of Murphy's Law. If I'm having internet issues, then that's Murphy's Law. <laughs>